We know that SpaceX has already created the largest and most powerful rocket in the world. This is an incredible achievement, but what if I told you that everything we've seen up until now is simply the beginning of the beginning? The Starship as you know it is nothing more than a warm-up act for a main event that could change everything that we know about human space exploration. Or it could fail spectacularly. As the man himself often says, success is far from certain, but excitement is guaranteed. In all of the hype surrounding Starship's most recent test flight on June 6th, some very important new information got lost among the noise. This is an environmental impact statement, and it's all about the future of Starship operations at Pad 39A of NASA's Kennedy Space Center on Cape Canaveral, Florida. This is a document prepared by the FAA, and it's based on information provided to them by SpaceX. There was already an environmental impact statement issued for Starship at Pad 39A back in 2019, and that's allowed SpaceX to move forward with some initial construction on the site. But in the five years since that report, the FAA notes that the Starship Super Heavy concept has evolved, and SpaceX is now proposing more launch infrastructure on the site that will support an advanced design of the Starship vehicle. We heard from SpaceX commentators during the most recent Starship launch that the company intends to use Kennedy Space Center as the primary base of operations for Starship. This is where payload missions will be flown out of, including Starlink, NASA, and Space Force missions, and all of the Artemis program launches. While Starbase will continue to be reserved for test flights only, which there are still going to be plenty of, even once the current iteration of Starship is performing flawlessly, that just means that it's time to start testing the second iteration of Starship, and after that comes version 3, and then who knows what comes next. Either way, Boca Chica will not be going quiet anytime soon, but as those new designs mature, they'll be transferred over to Florida for full operation. Here is what that will look like. According to the FAA report, the future Starship will be up to 492 feet in length or 150 meters depending on configuration. 150 meters was the spec given for Starship version 3 at Elon's most recent Starbase presentation, while Starship version 2 was listed at 124.4 meters. The current ship is 121.3. So from that wording, where they say depending on configuration, I would gather the V2 and V3 Starship will operate simultaneously. V3 looks more like a special use case variant, potentially a dedicated fuel tanker, and reserved for the most extreme payload operations, which would make it more of a Starship Block 2 configuration. Block 1 would be the standard configuration, which is what SpaceX is currently calling Starship 2, if that makes any sense. Anyway, the diameter of these future Starships will remain the same, approximately 30 feet or 9 meters. The report states that the Super Heavy will be powered by 35 Raptor engines. That's two more than the current prototype, and while it still seems impossible to fit any more engines into the existing thrust section, we've already seen some pretty clever designs that place five engine nozzles into the center cluster, where right now there are just three, which would make sense. Those center three engines are always the first to start up and the last to shut down on Super Heavy, and they are essential in the landing burn maneuver. So more nozzles means more redundancy, and it means less stress placed on each individual engine during these critical moments. The FAA says that the Super Heavy will hold up to 4,100 metric tons of propellant and reach a maximum liftoff thrust of 103 meganewtons, which is equivalent to 10,000 metric tons of force, and that's consistent with what SpaceX has promised for Super Heavy V3. On the ship stage, we are upgrading to nine engines, which has been expected for a long time now. That means three more vacuum-optimized Raptor engines to surround the ship's outer ring. The FAA lists up to 2,600 tons of propellant and 2,800 metric tons of thrust, which is actually a bit more than what's listed in the SpaceX graphic. It would bring us to well over double the initial thrust potential of the current Starship, which is not really able to deploy a payload, but the extended capability of the version 3 would push up above 200 metric tons to orbit. On both the ship and booster, the increase in total thrust 
is much greater than the addition of just two or three extra engines. So that means each engine is getting an upgrade in power. This would be the Raptor version 3. We can do some quick math here. If Super Heavy can reach 10,000 tons of force with 35 engines, then each Raptor is hitting around 285 tons of thrust, which would be up from the 230 on Raptor 2. One more thing that we've learned from recent activity at Starbase is that there is a new heat shield design for Starship. This is a multi-layer design that uses an underlying blanket of ablative material. It's a silicone fiber that is applied in between the outer black hexagon tiles and the steel body of the ship. It's like a backup heat shield in case one or more of the main tiles fall off during the course of the mission. The silicone will burn up and flake off when exposed to the hot plasma, which is a very effective way of moving heat away from the vehicle. But it also means that this is not a reusable layer, so it would save the ship from damage, but still lead to a total heat shield replacement before the vehicle could fly again. Now, from what we can gather here, Launch Complex 39A is about to become a very busy location, according to the environmental report. SpaceX will continue to launch Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy while Starship is operational, so there will be two new Starship towers built in addition to the existing launch pad that's been in service since the 1960s. What's interesting here is that the report specifically illustrates a separate catch tower that's downrange from the Starship launch mount. We've generally believed that the launch towers and catch towers were the same thing, and maybe they will be at some point, but for right now, it looks like SpaceX is keeping their options open, which apparently also includes water landings on drone ships, just like Falcon 9. According to the report, the Super Heavy could land on the catch tower or on a drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean, no closer than five nautical miles off the coast. So that's pretty weird. The drone ship situation would either require the booster to have landing legs, which aren't pictured in any Super Heavy rendering, and seemingly wouldn't fit anywhere on the existing designs, or the drone ship would need to be fitted with a catch tower, something more like those oil rig platforms from a few years back, which also doesn't seem very practical. The same is said for the upper ship stage. It could return to the launch site or land on a drone ship in the open ocean. They give an approximate location of between 55 degrees south latitude and 55 degrees north latitude for the water landing, which again seems weird to even include because it's so vague. I'm not a map guy, but as far as I can tell, that just means anywhere between Alaska and the tip of South America. So the water landing stuff is all very strange, but the separate catch tower does make some sense. Obviously, number one is not putting your launch mount hardware in danger every time a ship and booster comes back for a landing. And we can see that the catch tower location is set pretty far away from any of the critical infrastructure at Launch Complex 39. But a catch tower might also make sense from a logistics point of view. Since the ship stage will spend a lot more time in space, the ground crew could have a booster back on the launch mount and getting prepared by the time the ship is ready to come down. You probably don't want a ship landing on the same tower where the booster is already set up, at least not right now. We know this is something that SpaceX might want to do in the future. We've seen renderings of this situation, but that is far down the road. Also, if for whatever reason the ship has to abort during the ascent phase and make an emergency return to launch site, then you would really want to be able to land the ship and booster at pretty much the same time, so a dedicated catch tower would be great to have. This report also leaves open the possibility for SpaceX to expend both the ship and booster into the ocean. The FAA says that there will be up to 44 Starship launches per year from Pad 39A, so that's definitely not enough volume to require a second launch mount, but SpaceX does have some really interesting upgrades planned to the launch infrastructure at the Cape. We know that the upgraded tank farm at Cape Canaveral is targeting a 40-minute fill time for Starship, which is only 5 minutes more than Falcon 9, even though Starship uses 10 times the amount of propellant. This is going to vastly cut down on the amount of liquid methane and liquid oxygen that gets lost to boil off. SpaceX also has a much better plan in place for getting those propellants to the launch site. Currently, all of the cryogenic liquid needs to be brought into Starbase by tanker trucks. They need dozens of these tanker deliveries to fill the orbital tank farm. That takes a long time, so 
Launch Complex 39A will be fitted with its very own natural gas pretreatment and liquefaction system, meaning that there will be a natural gas pipeline running straight into the launch facility that will supply methane gas that can be supercooled into a liquid propellant on site. And this is joined by an air separation plant, which is basically a machine to extract pure oxygen and nitrogen gas from the air, and then likewise to the methane, it gets the cryogenic treatment to become a liquid. And then in order to properly handle all of that additional power from the upgraded Super Heavy booster, SpaceX will be installing a new water deluge system. There's no information specifically about the design. It could be a showerhead style steel plate, but we know that the volume of water will be vastly increased. Up to 1 million gallons of water is expected to be used during launch operations, which is around two and a half times more water than what is currently used for launches at Starbase. So I think that what all of this shows is that SpaceX is still trying to figure out what a fully operational Starship is going to look like. How big should it be? How much power does it need? Where will it land? All of this remains pretty open for interpretation. We are trying to grapple with some incredibly ambitious plans for the future, while in the present we have a very experimental prototype vehicle that still needs a lot of work before it can even begin to live up to expectations set by its own creator. This is a very long road that we still need to travel.